Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're diving into the heart of JPA in Spring Boot, the Entity Manager. Ever wondered how your Java code interacts with your database when using JPA? How your entities go from being simple objects in your application to actual rows in your tables? Well, the Entity Manager is the key player, the behind-the-scenes maestro that handles all those crucial database operations like saving, updating, and deleting. Don't let the name intimidate you. While it might sound a bit technical, we're going to explore it together, step by step, using clear and practical code examples that you can easily understand and apply. So, get ready to demystify the Entity Manager and gain a deeper understanding of how JPA works its magic. Let's get started. So first things first, what is the Entity Manager? Well, the Entity Manager is the central interface you'll use to interact with what's called the Persistence Context in JPA, Java Persistence API. Think of the persistence context as a kind of holding space or a first-level cache for your entities. Now, if the persistence context is the holding space, then the entity manager is like the front desk of your JPA setup. It's the object you'll talk to when you want to do anything with your entities in relation to the database. And it's not just about talking. The entity manager manages the entire life cycle of your entities, from the moment they're created in your Java code, through any changes you make to them, all the way through to when you might want to remove them from the database. Think of the Entity Manager as the gateway between your Java code and the actual database operations. It's the one that turns your objects into SQL actions and brings data back into your Java world. Okay, we've mentioned the term persistence context a few times, so what exactly is it? According to the JPA specification, an Entity Manager instance is associated with a persistence context. A persistence context is a set of entity instances in which, for any persistent entity identity, there is a unique entity instance. Within the persistence context, the entity instances and their lifecycle are managed. The Entity Manager API is used to create and remove persistent entity instances, to find entities by their primary key, and to query over entities. I know that official definition might sound a bit complex, right? So let me explain it in a simple way. So, persistence context is like a temporary memory area, or you can think of it as a cache, where JPA stores your entities, Java objects, when you're working with a database using Entity Manager. All right, so here's something really interesting. Whenever you fetch, insert, or update an entity using JPA, it doesn't directly hit the database. Instead, it first goes into something called the persistence context. You can think of it like a temporary memory or a first-level cache. And once the transaction is committed, JPA automatically pushes those changes to the database. The best part? You don't have to do anything manually. Entity Manager handles everything for you behind the scenes. Now let's quickly go over some key features of the persistence context, and trust me, these are super useful when working with JPA. First up, caching. When you fetch an entity, JPA stores it in memory. So if you fetch the same entity again within the same transaction, JPA won't hit the database again. It just pulls the data from memory. Next. Change tracking. Any change you make to the entity is automatically tracked. You don't need to worry about manually syncing it with the database. JPA has got your back. It keeps track of changes and ensures that everything is in sync with the database. Same entity, same instance. Here's another awesome feature. If you fetch the same entity again, you'll get the same object instance. This avoids duplicates and ensures consistency in your app. Auto synchronization. When you commit your transaction, all the changes are automatically saved to the database. No need to manually call an update method. JPA handles that for you. Finally, lifecycle management. JPA is always aware of the entity's lifecycle. Whether the entity is new, updated, deleted, or unchanged, JPA knows and tracks it. This ensures that everything is managed smoothly. All right, we've used the word entity quite a few times. But what exactly is an entity? Well, it's simple. An entity is just a Java class that maps to a table in your database. That means when you create a class in Java, you can tell JPA, hey, this class represents that table in the database, and each field in this class represents a column. For example, on the screen, you're seeing a student entity. And here's the cool part. Each object or instance of this class represents one row in that table. So to break it down, Java class is database table. Object is row. Field is column. 
All right, next important question. Is Entity Manager thread safe? The answer is no, Entity Manager is not thread safe. That means you should never share a single Entity Manager instance across multiple threads. Each API request, or let's say each thread, should get its own new Entity Manager instance. Why? Because if you try to use the same Entity Manager in multiple threads, it can cause serious issues. Things like data inconsistencies, weird unexpected bugs, or even application crashes. So, here's a simple rule to remember. One Entity Manager. Belong to one thread. All right, now let's talk about something important, the types of persistence contexts in JPA. There are mainly two types you should know. Transaction scoped persistence context and extended persistence context. Transaction scoped persistence context is the default one in Spring Boot. It's created when a transaction starts and it's closed automatically when that transaction ends. This is perfect for web applications where each request is short and independent. So basically, for every HTTP request, a new entity manager and persistence context are created. Extended persistence context one is a bit different. It lasts beyond a single transaction. It stays active even when your transaction ends. So where do we use this? Mostly in stateful applications like long running workflows and desktop apps, etc. It's not common in Spring Boot, but super useful when you need long lived conversations between your app and the database. So just remember, Transaction scoped is short-lived, great for web apps. Extended is long-lived, great for multi-step UIs or stateful apps. In this tutorial, we'll stick to the default behavior, which means we'll be using the transaction scoped persistence context, the one that Spring Boot manages for us automatically. It's perfect for most web apps and covers the majority of real-world use cases. So no need to worry about extended context for now, we're keeping things simple and practical. All right. So now let's see how to inject Entity Manager in your Spring Boot application. There are actually two ways to do it. Option one, using at auto-wired. Yes, you can auto-wire the Entity Manager directly, but wait, it's not recommended. Option two, using at persistence context. This annotation is provided by JPA, Java Persistence API and it's the official and recommended way to inject an Entity Manager in your Spring Boot application. So now you might be thinking, why did we use it auto-wired earlier for dependency injection, but when it comes to Entity Manager, we are not using it the same way? Well, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, Entity Manager is not thread safe. This means that we can't share a single Entity Manager instance across multiple threads. Each time we need a new Entity Manager instance for each transaction or request. That's why we need to go with at persistence context. When you use a persistence context, Spring doesn't just inject the actual entity manager, it injects a proxy object. This proxy is bound to the current transaction and is aware of the persistence context. This proxy ensures that the entity manager is scoped correctly and each request gets its own instance. This is managed automatically by Spring, so you don't have to worry about it yourself. In simple terms, at persistence context ensures that you're getting a fresh, properly scoped entity manager each time, avoiding the risks that come with thread safety and persistence context management. If you use it auto-wired, Spring might inject a generic entity manager instance. This instance doesn't have the correct transactional behavior or proper lifecycle management. Without the transactional context, your entity manager could be shared across threads, leading to potential issues. You might not get a new instance for each request, which can cause data inconsistency or even app crashes in multi-threaded environments or asynchronous operations. So, to keep things safe and efficient, always go for at persistence context. This ensures that you're getting an entity manager that is properly scoped, thread safe, and correctly bound to the current transaction. It automatically handles the lifecycle, so you don't have to worry about anything going wrong. So, regarding this, I'll be diving into some coding in the third video of this series, where we'll implement these concepts practically with some real-world examples. All right, quick summary. Today we explored what the Entity Manager is, how it works with the persistence context, its key features, and the correct way to inject it in Spring Boot. In the next video, we'll move one step ahead and see how to insert data using Entity Manager with clean and simple code examples. 
So if you found this helpful, hit that like button, subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the next part. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.